the Latinx community is very beautiful. Like I love my community. Um, and you know, there's a lot of strong uh, Latinas and there's a lot, there's a fashion, you know, there's a fashion, there's a way of life. Um, there's a lot of strong, um, beautiful Latina women that are very, uh, very strong to the sense of like, I'm not going to listen to what um, I am expected to listen to and I'm not going to conform to the way that I'm expected to conform and you know they live their life the way they want to live and there's just kind of like this culture behind it and I love it and so um you know I uh, I like follow the culture anyway and um I feel like sometimes by doing that um uh, it kind of takes away um this whole like perception of me going by they them pronouns and by a different name it's like oh well you know you're you know, you're uh, kind of, you know, you're wearing the hoops and you're wearing uh, like your hair curly and the way you dress and it's like this and that. And you know, that's what really strong uh, Latinas do. Mm -hmm. So why do you want to follow that really strong Latina culture when you, you know, go by they, them? Like that doesn't make sense. And so I feel like um, when you follow those certain things and those certain uh, like patterns or uh, like cultural things, it kind of, uh, in, in other people's eyes, it takes away from your identity when I feel like it shouldn't. Gender dressing and, like, what's normal and not, it's, like, a really big thing, usually. Yes. And so I guess it's, like, hard to get out of, especially with your hair and, like, how you dress and, like, people of color, especially, because, like, you, like it's been, like, so many years of oppression. And then, like, when you're trying to take that back, you're like trying not to let go of your culture but at the same time you have so many different peoples within a community and you still have to realize that so yeah so it's like oh, it's like drop the culture and like be you but don't drop the culture because that's a part of you so it's like yeah. so frustrating and like I always have to feel like I have to like change what I'm talking about or what I'm like passionate about to like fit into like a community of people of color which is sad because, like, at the end of the day, that's, like, where I fit in. But, like, if I'm not allowed to, like, share everything with them, it's, like, kind of, like, halfway fitting in and halfway standing out. So I guess it's just, like, still kind of hard. With the halfway fitting in and halfway standing out, oh, oh, that hit home. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, like so you're hiding stuff from, mm -hmm. like, people who should be in your community like naturally but you can't because it's just like not a thing that you can do that's acceptable mm -hmm. but they're your community for the longest time i didn't meet an individual that was of my color or of color and that was like non-conforming or gender expansive for the longest time and then my friend came out to me and um they're haitian and i was like like finally meet someone who was of color and kind of got the cultural um differences and like being who they were and like conforming and or not conforming to like the gender that they were and like i felt the longest time i felt like i didn't fit in the whole um like visual uh representation of being like non-binary or non-conforming because there's kind of this image that people um see and they're like oh yeah that person like they probably aren't cis and like um they would jump to conclusions and i would get immediately profiled as someone who was cis just because i was more feminine 